the new workshop. If you're anything like me, you have a 3D printer. Or two. Or three. But sometimes plastic doesn't cut it, especially when you're trying to make stuff for high load or high torque situations, like drivetrains. Like here's my scooter drivetrain, my ripstick drivetrain, my drill gearbox. Plastic just doesn't cut it. It either melts or wears down or the teeth shear. So I wanted to make parts out of metal, but since I'm a hobbyist on a budget, real CNC's and metal 3D printers were way out of the question. So I set out to find something like the size of my 3D printer, like a desktop CNC. And let me tell you boys, when it comes to cheap machines, China never disappoints. So about two years ago, I picked up the same smart 3018 CNC off of Banggood for 200 bucks. Right out of the box, this machine cannot cut aluminum. Its motor is kind of a joke. It's not really good for anything other than plastic, wood, and foam. So my goal was to be able to mill things out of aluminum, like gears and pulleys, because I'm trying to transfer torque. It's all about transferring torque. I'm about to take you guys on a two-year journey, full of trial and error, and chatter, and metal flinging, and bit breaking but we were on a mission to cut 6061 aluminum at a non-glacial pace. Let the upgrades begin, boys. Bing, bang, boom, bada, bop, pow, boys and girls. I will admit that I don't have a lot of experience with this as it is. But that's because it can't cut metal, so why am I even wasting my time? Big upgrades here, nice fat 500 watt new spindle motor, hits I think 13,000 RPM versus the original tiny dweeby dorky little drill motor, 7,000 RPM. Power supply came with it, new Z axis, nice linear rails, look how smooth. As opposed to these rod, rod rails that have a little bit of deflection. See that? Yeah, it's not gonna cut it when I'm cutting metal. Got some limit switches to set some bounds. Z probe, set my tool offsets. Some nice 3D printed adapters to mount this to my new, my new axis. Let's do it. All right, boys, I've done it. Linear rails mounted to the 8020. 500 watt motor mounted to my Z axis. And I have my Z axis mounted to my new rails. This was the only custom piece I had to make, which was a, it's a 3D printed adapter. Essentially, it's a brick that screws into the bearing blocks on each rail and then from the back of the brick i screwed into my z-axis it's gonna be lit three hours later Bruh. 
All right, boys, so I made those upgrades, right? I got my new Z-axis, got a bigger motor, got the new rails on the Y-axis. It's looking pretty good. I've made some cuts. Let me show you what I've built already. Made a fidget spinner. Pretty sick. A little wheel, this was my first cut. And then this nice sprocket. Oh yeah. What I've determined is, yes, this thing works. Yes, it can cut aluminum, but it's really slow. Like for it to not be breaking, you gotta run this thing super slow. You have to be here 24 seven watching it. And it's really like not the most pleasant. I need this thing to go faster because I'm impatient and I wanna crank out parts. I've diagnosed the problem being the movement in this rail right here. The way that these bearings are pressed against the rail isn't really the most the most secure, it come, they come loose after a while and I have to adjust them. Because once it gets a little bit loose, the chatter just takes over. You can see, especially on the insides of some of these teeth. Oh, look how, all, oh my God. Yeah, service finish is pretty bad. So, I bought a new Z-axis. It's pretty sexy. Look how shiny it is. Oh yeah. This is gonna replace the already upgraded z-axis um this one was a little bit more expensive i think twice expensive about 80 bucks about 140 or something like that in order to get this here a couple things got to be done one we need to make an adapter to mount this to the rail so we gotta make another one of those looks like that and it's going bing bang boom bada bop pow boys and girls the z-axis is officially upgraded it is beefy, macho, chunky, thick. Have you ever seen a more good looking CNC in your life? No, you haven't. Then it was my girlfriend's birthday and my girlfriend likes drafts. So the first test after this series of upgrades is a draft birthday card. Check it out. Then I made a mini wrench, just because. Even after all these upgrades, I still wasn't totally satisfied with the performance of my CNC. The surface finish was still not great, and the machine vibrated a lot. I decided I had two issues I could make better. One, the Z-axis was mounted to the linear rails with only one bearing block per rail. And two, there's a pretty big lever arm between the bottom of the end mill and where the motor's mounted. So as the machine's cutting, it really tries to deflect that motor using that lever arm. So as one does when looking for inspiration, I hit up Google. I saw people were using these Makita routers for their desktop CNC's. So I looked into it. This thing packs one and a quarter horsepower, runs at 30,000 RPM, and most importantly, has a shorter lever arm. Yeah, it's a little pricey, but I'm still going to send it. See if we can cut like butter today. 
So everybody grab their toast. But we just experienced a catastrophic failure. My end mill broke, the rest of it stuck in there. And I plowed through my part, the piece of wood, and the bed itself. Thankfully, my trusty blast shield saved me from getting blasted. Safety first, boys and girls. Get yourself an e-stop. After a year of upgrading, tuning, and testing, I'm pretty satisfied with my $600 Chinese CNC. Obviously, it's not as good as the $3,000 desktop CNCs you can get, but it met my goal of making aluminum pulleys on a budget at a non-glacial pace. I hope you guys can make your own like mine, learn from mistakes, and make even better upgrades. I'll put as many of the parts in the description as I can. Be sure to leave a comment or question if you have any. Oh, and don't forget to pound that subscribe button. Later, boys.